Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in Alhamdulillah Today inshallah we answer a question That was sent to Al-Madrasa Via email A sister asks Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Is it possible you make a video recommending Arabic And English dictionaries for beginners uh, I don't know if she meant recommending Arabic to English dictionaries or English to Arabic dictionaries. So I'm assuming she's talking about Arabic to English dictionaries <coughs> for beginners. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. I believe in previously I made a video related to dictionaries in Arabic, from Arabic to English, for English speakers. Depending on your mother language, the dictionary you're gonna use, if you English speaker, Spanish speaker, it's gonna be uh, two different type of advice. Related to the English speaker, now I recommend two dictionaries. The first dictionary I recommend is called Handswear Dictionary. <clears throat> Handswear Dictionary, uh, Mu'jam is another word for kamus. Mu'jam, a collective of words related to words, vocab, and the Arabic language of the present time, current time. Right? Uh, it also has, it's from Arabic to English, as you can see the title here. A dictionary of modern written Arabic by hands wear. Here's in the English. I have the hardback. A dictionary of modern Arabic. Written Arabic. Arabic to English. This is a must. Right? The hands wear dictionary. The author, who I believe in the introduction, he was German. And he wrote this to compile the dictionary from German. Arabic into German. And I believe it was translated into English. I have here uh, a bootleg copy. There's different versions of the dictionary. You have the bootleg version, which I have in front of me, is the bootleg version. Some of them are a hardback, like this one. Some of them are paperback. But I recommend a student, if he buys the one, for example, go to a known bookstore like Barnes & Nobles. If you live in the U.S. or the U.K. or in Canada, if you go to Barnes & Nobles and you buy this from Barnes & Noble, even if they don't have it in the store, you could buy it online on Barnes & Nobles that it is the uh the it is not the bootleg version it's the correct version and there's a little bit extra wordings inside of the dictionary the bootleg version sometimes is going to be various from the legit version of the dictionary so I advise people go by the legit version of the dictionary if you have the bootleg version of the dictionary like i have it's not a problem but this is not the only means or sources to arabic language or understanding quranic arabic or words or vocabulary in Quran, but when it comes to verbs and conjugating some verbs and its meanings and words that are derivative or nouns that are derivative from this particular um, verb, this will benefit you the best at. Now, if I compare this dictionary to an Arabic to Arabic dictionary, whether it's from Arabic, Arabic modern dictionary, or a classic Arabic to Arabic dictionary like Lisana Arab or any other type of dictionary like this, Arabic to Arabic, I see the way that he formed his dictionary in the hands where is somewhat similar to what you will find in the Arabic Arabic dictionary and how he defined the words, how he format the sentences related to the meanings of the def definition of the words, right? So this is one of the first dictionaries I would recommend. In this dictionary, the way you use it, you need to learn. You have to understand a little bit about Arabic grammar because you look up the, the nouns or the words in Arabic by the root of the word. If it's related to a verb, which is related to the past tense verb. And for the past tense verb, you have to under, understand if it's a fitlu uh, sahih, if the letters within the verb, the wazin, or we say the radicals within the, the, the verb, meaning each letter, if it's a sahih, if the letter is sahih, a sound letter, and you look it up, any word, a noun, you look it up by the past tense verb. If it is a fitlu mu'atal, which is a, a broken verb, right? Or harfu illa, the letters are considered to be weak letters, 
there's some things about when you're conjugating to the modara, the present tense, you look at the verbs, the past, the past tense verb. If it's a verb that is a weak verb, which means it has a weak letter inside, then you will look it up in this dictionary by the present tense, how it's formed. If the letter changed from, for example, to wow, from Aleph to wow, or yeah, like this, if the letter change, especially the middle radical of the letter change, the middle radical of the letter change for be, being a uh, weak verb, then this is how you would look up that past tense verb in this dictionary. So you have to know a little bit about Arabic grammar, a little bit about verbs, conjugating verbs related to the weak verb to look up the words. But this is a dictionary that I use a lot myself. I use it today a lot for translating and just to grasp meanings of words of vocab in English language from Arabic into English. But this is not the only dictionary that I use. That is for uh, anybody on any level. The next dictionary is going to be handswear. Handswear dictionary. This is, I'm sorry. The next dictionary is called the Maori. I had this for a long time. And the Maori is very different from the handswear. You do not look up the word by its roots. You look up the word by the way it appears, what you're looking at, or what you're looking for, the way it appears. So this is an easier dictionary to use. Maori, which is a resource. And this is from Arabic into English. They sell these from English to Arabic, and I do not recommend to buy it from Arabic to English and English to Arabic in one book, as I said in the last video, that the words are less in it. The words are less inside of it. So buy the one that says Arabic into English, right? And I use this dictionary a lot also for translating, especially technical words, scientific words. Um, I use it a lot all the time. I always use this dictionary a lot. And it also gives you a brief definition sometimes of Arabic words and the meaning in Arabic and simple Arabic. Now, I have other dictionaries like I have Misana Arab, which is which is compiled all into two books, two bulk books. I use this a lot myself. And there's other dictionaries that I can recommend. And other dictionaries I use and software I use for Arabic um, both dictionaries. But I prefer to use an Arabic to Arabic dictionary. The thing about when you're using Arabic to English dictionary, that's only going to be for a certain time and a certain point. But for those students who are used to using these dictionaries and you becomes accustomed to reading books and listening to things in Arabic and then you look up words and meanings of things, that at a time or point is going to come that you want to have to understand that word in Arabic, how it's meant and used in the Arabic language. And that is where you're going to find a lot of the Arabic to English dictionaries fall short of. For example, if I look in the hands where some Quranic words or some thick words, I'm not going to find the thick or the Quranic meaning or the thick meaning of the word in the hands where I'm going to have to use an Arabic to Arabic dictionary that explain words in thick, that explain words and uh, Quranic meanings of words like this. So in that case, there's other dictionaries, other things you have to do. So these dictionaries are only a stepping stone. Like I have other dictionaries I use for fiqh, kamus, or mu'jim fi fiqh, what words meaning fiqh, and then in sharia, I have another one, what is a mu'jim of mafradat, a terminology of words that we find in hadith, in the hadith, I have another specialized dictionary for that, so on and so forth, which is in Arabic into Arabic. So sooner or later, the English to Arabic dictionaries, you're gonna have you're gonna have to get up out of them, because they're only gonna benefit you in the sense maybe when it translate, but when it comes to some legal term in Islam, that you're not gonna get the definitions from these type of dictionary, the handswear or uh, the maori. You're not gonna get these particular words. You're gonna get the linguistic meaning of the word, right? So you have to sooner or later be able to learn Arabic into Arabic. So I'm gonna give some advice about dictionaries and 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 how to use them and what to buy and how to make your own dictionary. I recommend for every student who's studying Arabic in the beginning, no matter what curriculum that you're studying, to make a vocab sheet from the words of the book that you're using. If, in some case, you are using, you are using something, for example, you're using Medina Arabic course, curriculum, then that book has the actual dictionary. 
Before I tell you, I would tell you this is the dictionary, the glossary for Medina Arabic studies. In the Medina Arabic course, this is the actual dictionary. I mean, this is a very old dictionary. I don't use it for anything, but it will help you with vocabulary that you're learning in the book. All right? It will help you with the vocabulary for students using this book, but you don't need this. If you have the hands wear or you have the mouth already, you don't need this at all. This is a dictionary that you don't need. You don't need it, all right? But if you want to know the vocabulary in the Medina Arabic course series, there is websites that have a vocab sheet for all the books, I mean, all the vocabulary in the books. There is a Medina Arabic course, have dictionaries for these words. I think my camera is dirty. So I tell brothers and sisters who are learning Arabic, if you learn Arabic from these curriculum, use the glossaries and those dictionaries also. Learn the words that are in that, that book or that curriculum you're using. For example, in Muhammad Ibn Saud curriculum, I think I have one or two books of them here. I'm not for sure. You'll find in their curriculum that they have a glossary inside of their works. I think I have one or two of their books here. Just give me a sec. I think I have their books in the master one that and I'll have a book in. Because in those books, you will find that inside the book in those in Muhammad Ibn Saul, those curriculum, it has a glossary inside. These books also have a glossary inside. And I thought I had maybe one or two of these books with me. Yes, I do. I think I found it. No, that's not it. If I could find it, maybe I'll show you. But usually in those books, Muhammad Ibn Saud books, for example, they have a book on Ta'bir. They have a book on Quran, Tafsir al-Quran. In, in each book, for the curriculum, it has a glossary inside. That's also a good beginning dictionary to start building and using glossary. Why? Because most of the words inside of them are going to be the Quranic definition, the Islamic meanings and usage of vocabulary and terminology that you're going to need. Right? So I recommend if a person finish like a course, like a Medina Arabic course, that he should go maybe to some of these books, like from the Muhammad Ibn Saud Arabic curriculum for non-Arabic speakers pick up some of the books, they have them online for free, and make a glossary. Now, here's a, a, one of my old forms of making saving vocab. You can use index cards. I have another video on index card. But I, I, I take my words, for example, this is an old dictionary of mine, uh, list, words related to fiqh, according to the chapters, Kitab al-Tahara, and it has some vocabulary here. And they give you some of the meanings and definitions in Arabic and in English. English. All right? And you can see me, I'm going on and on. And I highlight these. So a book like this, I don't use this no more. But I use this to, when I first read it or compiled it, it's from the vocab study for certain things related to fic. And I compile a glossary out of each chapter, each section of words I need to know and fic meanings of words. So I know them and I also could translate them, right? So this is why I recommend students to do to also build their own glossary from curriculum they are using in subjects that they are studying and make their own glossary. Even though I don't use this no more. I don't use this no more. But when I started using or learning that subject, I use these things in that particular subject and learning. Oh, here we go. So I found one of them actually. All right, so this is um, Cecilia Ta'lim Lugha Arabia. And this is Mustawa Thalif, Fi Durus Bin Quran al Quran. All right, so this is a book, and this is from, yes, Muhammad Ibn Saud. This is the curriculum from Muhammad Ibn Saud. So this is talking about Quran. So you look in the book, in the lessons, it's talking about Quran. It's giving you a few ayats, 
and then it gives you ma'na al-kalimat, the meanings of the words. Waylun, halakun. What do waylun means? Halak. You need to be a little bit stronger in Arabic to use it, but this is a beginner's. I still see this as a beginner book. And then at the end of the book, it has a glossary. All right? And at the end of the book, also has a glossary defining the words. Athar. Athara ya'thiru is a verb. What it means? Faddala. Right? And it says, Aniya. Ainu Aniya. And tells you the meaning. Ainu an ma'in. Right? Balagat darajatu. So it's giving you the meanings. Balagat darajatu. Harara. Arara. Tiha. And Nahaya. So it's giving you words. Ankad. Ankasa. Right? Yankisu. It's a fi'lu. It says it's the opposite of Zada. Right? The opposite. This is the equal sign that's crossed in the middle. It means the opposite of Zada. Huh? Anakis. Huh? Al Tajaro. Al Kid. Talking about the value of something in weights. Right? So this is something related to the Quran. So uh, something like this is also a dictionary for you. Make a glossary. You study them. Because these are vocabularies you're going to need. You're not going to find a type of vocabs like this in the hands where or the mouth related to the Quranic meanings and the meanings of things and fit and so on and so forth. So, I recommend that method of dictionary. Now, when it comes to Arabic to Arabic dictionary, I would tell maybe make another video because myself, there's many scholars who recommend the Arabic Arabic dictionaries. And I would say always start with the beginner easy one and work your way up. Start off the beginning one and work your way up. And there are some websites you can use from Arabic to Arabic dictionaries. A lot of this stuff, uh, and when it comes to apps, and when it comes to PDF format, a lot of this stuff is online for free. But I like to keep certain things in my hand um, so I can look things up. And I like to use, for that case, I will use Omni Santa Auto. Right? And I have it condensed in, in two big volumes. I will use that, or I'll use a smaller dictionary like this. This is a bigger dictionary. <coughs> a smaller one like these two to look up things. All right, so all this is actually my section of dictionaries. But I usually use more apps because they have a lot of apps in Arabic language that are, uh, give you the meaning of words in Arabic definition Arabic, the use in Arabic, what it means in English, and you're going to find a lot of things even in the Arabic you need to translate, when you want to understand in Arabic, you can't, it's hard to find certain words with the equivalent to it or a program or a dictionary, so you have to some way, somehow, learning Arabic in Arabic, and you can start with some of those simple Arabic to Arabic dictionary apps that explain things in English and they give you the detailed definition and different examples in Arabic and Arabic dictionaries, I like to use these type of dictionaries on the apps. Because they tell you what the word means in English. And then sometimes the word or definition in English does not give you how the Arab use it, this particular word. Because you might see the definition of the word in English. And how we use this word in English is not how we use this word in, in the Arabic language. And that's very important. You study Arabic and Arabic and use the Arabic to Arabic dictionary. Because sometimes I look at the word and it tells you it means in the translation, it means this in the dictionary. But when I go to the Arabic text, the definition is detail, different usage. Examples, it gets more thoroughly in the meaning and the usage of the word, like this. And you're not going to find that in the Arabic to English dictionaries. In Arabic to English, you're not going to find all of that. Uh, so, to conclude this video, I think I answered the sister question related to the dictionary. And if she meant also English to Arabic dictionaries, then me per se, I don't really use English to Arabic dictionaries. I have one. <clears throat> I have one, the concise uh, Oxford English to Arabic dictionary. I have one, but I don't use it. I actually, really, I don't use it. I really don't use it, right? Um, because um, it has come times where I have been, you know, look up a word in Arabic. It gives you some of the basic meanings. Some of the simple words and things in Arabic to English is really easy to understand from Arabic to English, but some complex, complex wording 
for the usage. We may use a see a word, see a word, for example, it says eight. Right? This is a good example, actually. It says eight here. So it has uh, Thamania ending with Tamanobuta. Then I have another word, a Thamanin. When to use which word? And that's the problem with the English to Arabic dictionary. It says Thania, Thania tun, ending in and ta and it has that um thamanin. When to use which word? You need to know Arabic grammar. Then sometimes I go to other words in it. Right? Trying to see another example. Some simple. I'm trying to. Um, I'm looking up simple words. <clears throat> Sometimes you will find words that what it tell you means in English. I mean, with the English word, where it tells you what it means in Arabic. There's a certain way you have to use this vocab in the sentence. And if you don't know Arabic grammar and how to use the uses of this word it's telling you, you might choose to use the wrong word. So me per se, I don't really use English to Arabic dictionary, but I do own one if I need it. And my wife, she is a, a native Arabic speaker, and she needed herself sometimes when she went to understand certain words in Arabic. And then for the Arab native speaker, she looked look in English, and she could determine which way in Arabic is the proper usage of using that word, if she understand that word in English correctly, right? And then some people like to use another Arabic, I mean, English to Arabic dictionary is called, and I think it's Nifas. I don't own one. It's called Nifas, and it's very popular. I don't actually own it, because I usually don't service a English to Arabic dictionary. I prefer to study the Arabic to English and Arabic to Arabic dictionary. Then through the usage, if I want to find what a, a word in English, what it means in Arabic, I have to first see how I want to use it in the sentence. Then I will go and look for the proper word in Arabic to use it, and I will do that on my own. Or I do it through asking somebody who's proficient in the Arabic language. Because sometimes I might, I might use one of these dictionaries from English to Arabic, and I find a word and use it. And the native Arabic speaker who's proficient in the language say, no, that's not how we use that particular word in Arabic. So I don't, I don't really use a lot of Arabic to English dictionaries. But to getting words like vocabulary, words like fruits, the sky, and this, and that, you know, those words you will find already in those curriculum teaching Arabic as a second language, those type of vocabulary you're going to find in those curriculum anyway. And this is why I mentioned about using the glossary in the books that you're using to learn Arabic and making your own glossary from writings, it needs to be your vocabulary words, all right? And then you will build up by buying an Arabic to Arabic dictionary and an Arabic to English dictionary like the ones I showed you, the hands written, the maurit, and then you will use, I will use an app, I use an app, you know? I have an app on my phone and I have it on my iPad and I use this app. Even when I'm lazy and I don't wanna look up in the dictionary, I will even use the app or I go to a website called a Ma'ani, I believe the name of the website. It's an Arabic to Arabic uh, dictionary, and it has some English meanings of the words. I use this type of website when I want to get a quick meaning of the words because they will reference popular and famous Arabic dictionaries in Arabic. So instead of me, I don't have all these different dictionaries in my assets, but I could use the word or use this website and find which which of these famous dictionaries, how they use and how they define in the word. I have that to my assets access by using the online dictionary online or using an app that refers to a program that's similar to this and that's why I prefer for myself whether for the student who's studying Arabic for uh, his mother tongue then everyone will have different every person who studied Arabic might recommend something else might recommend another type of dictionary and I've been through a lot of dictionaries and I've seen a lot of dictionaries from Arabic to English those two I see it fits the best for the English speakers English speakers, English speakers, because it gets more detail. Somebody who wants to get more detail in the Arabic language, get more deep into it, get more to the grind to it, then you should use the handswear and the maurit, and then find yourself a good Arabic to Arabic dictionary from a beginner level, and work your way up to an intermediate to advanced level, where you could just buy Lisana Arab, 
There's other dictionaries you can find and look. But I prefer the Lisana Arab in a simple dictionary or even buying a uh, an Arabic buying a Sakopedia. A Sakopedia in Arabic for scientific Sakopedia. They have them small, two or three small volumes, meaning you're gonna break down the words in science and math and um, you know things related to technology, things related to transportation and things like that. Then study a book like this and you could also pick up some vocabulary and things like that. So I recommend these type of things, you know, if you able to buy them or use them online or download them online, these are things I recommend. And I Abu Bara Muhammad Amriki. And if you like this video, please click like and please share it. Subhanahu wa Hamdik wa